Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Retro and in this video we're going to take a plunge into the world of Nintendo NES bootleg games. Bootlegs, also known as pirates, fakes, counterfeits or whatever you want to call them, they're unofficial copies of games or even sprite hacks of other games with a different character in them. Nowadays you have a lot of Nintendo DS, Game Boy Advance games that are copied, counterfeited, you have entire stores full of them, especially the Pokemon games, but back in the old days you had them as well. You had the Moultrie cartridges that had either 260, 13 or upwards to a thousand games on them, usually a lot of repetition, a lot of half games, etc. But there were also games which have Nintendo's most famous protagonist, Mario. In this video we're going to take a look at four of these Mario bootlegs. So the ones I have here are MC Mario, kind of sounds familiar, you'll find out why. This one is 92 Super Mario Family and this is one of the most desired bootlegs because it's the only way you can play uh, the original Super Mario Bros 2 on a 72 pins NTSC cartridge. So this is the Mario Bros 2 that got released in Japan. Then we have Super Mario Bros 4, also a famous pirate. This is a sprite hack of Armadillo, so it has Mario sprite pasted on another game. And the last one is Super Mario Party, which has a gathering of Mario games as well. Unofficial Mario games, sprite hacks of Mario games, and just regular Mario games. The name MC Mario left this bootleg with two options. Either a DJ Hero clone with Mario on vocals, or a sprite hack of the NES platformer McDonald Land, also known as MC Kids. Seeing Ronald McDonald asking Mario to go after the Hamburglar, it looks like they chose the second option with this game. Among NES gamers, MC Kids is viewed as an above average platformer. It leans heavily on the structure and gameplay of Super Mario Bros. 3, but it has its own unique parts such as the cards you need to collect. In this victory screen you get at the end of a level, you can clearly see that the Mario sprite was put over the original MC Kids one. In this slow motion you can see that as soon as the blue Mario is in the air, he reverts to his original sprite. Next up is 1992 Super Mario Family. As I said in the intro, this is the only way to play the original Super Mario Bros. 2 on a 72 pins cartridge, and this makes it a very desired bootleg. A thing that stands out from the start screen is that it has 8 Mario games and 2 games that have nothing to do with the Italian plumber. Most likely they had some spare room on the ROM and threw in some extra games. The first few games on this cartridge are just the regular Mario games. We're gonna skip through them quickly because there's nothing there you haven't seen before. Except that on the cartridge the game labeled Super Mario Bros. 2 is actually Super Mario Bros. 1. Golden Mario is where it gets interesting. This is the original Famicom version of Super Mario Bros. 2. This game did not get a western release until its appearance as the lost levels on the Super Nintendo game Super Mario All-Stars. The reasons for not releasing this was its high difficulty and its strong similarity to the first Super Mario Bros. game. The name of the fifth game shows that this bootleg was made in Japan, because they called the game that we know as Super Mario Bros. 2, Wonderful Mario. The funny thing is that this is another sprite hack, but one done by Nintendo themselves. Because the Japanese Mario 2 was too hard, Nintendo decided to alter a Famicom game named Doki Doki Panic. After slapping Mario's face on it, the game was sold to us as Mario Bros. 2. Rock Mario 4 is the same game as Super Mario Bros 4, the third pirate I showed you in the intro. So if you're in the market for some Mario hacks, this Super Mario Family cartridge is your go-to cartridge. It has everything. Rock Mario 4 is another sprite hack, and this time of the Famicom game Armadillo. In this platformer, the main gimmick and attack is your ability to turn into a ball. The graphics are nice, but the gameplay is a bit slow for my taste. Add to that the challenge created by the slippery controls and you could say this is not my favorite Mario game. Super Mario Bros 4 is one of the best sprite hacks I've seen. Except for the victory dance at the end of the level, the game always shows a correct Mario sprite. With Baby Mario it looks like the creators of this cartridge were tired of changing things in the games and adding sprites. All they did was name the game Baby Mario in the menu and for the rest it's just a regular ROM of the Famicom game Bio Miracle Bokutu Upa. You play as Baby Upa, a prince with a magical rattle on a quest to destroy the demon's eye. The fact that your rattle doesn't just kill an enemy but turns them into a floating platform adds a nice twist to this fun platforming game. After Baby Mario we get two games that also have an NES release in the west. 
Dr. Mario, the famous addictive puzzle game in which Mario is my colleague in medicine and Mickey Mouse, aka Mickey Mouse Capade, a platforming game by Capcom, which was their first of many amazing Disney games. The last game on this Super Mario Family cartridge is the Famicom only Dynamite Bowl. If you're into slow paced bowling games, this one is right up your alley, but for me, it's a gutter ball. Time to take a look at the last of the four bootleg games, Super Mario Party. This one has six different Mario games on it, but we're gonna skip three of those because those are the regular Mario releases we already saw. The first interesting game on this cartridge is Dream Mario Bros. And as you can see, this game messes with your mind. It's a version of Super Mario Bros. 1 where the first half of the screen shows the part of the level that is outside of your normal view. It starts off being confusing and annoying, but once you get the hang of it, this game is a nice test of how good you've memorized the levels of Mario Bros. 1 over the years. Super Golden Mario Bros. starts off as your regular Mario Bros. 2. But as soon as you hit the floor, you see that there are some differences. It looks like this version has random doors, plants and blocks placed throughout the levels. Usually these glitches aren't usable like in Dream Mario before this, but in this game they are. To conclude this review, I can now say that I understand why some people like these bootlegs. They give quirky additions and alterations to the games that you love, and this gives you a new, fresh view on your favorite titles. If you have any questions or comments regarding these bootlegs or these games, feel free to comment on YouTube or Facebook. Thanks for watching, bye bye.